Hi everyone, welcome to February Favorites. I have so much to get through. I can't believe how quick the month went and how jam-packed it was. So starting with some favorites, oldies but goodies, my Anastasia, my Sultry, and the Soft Glam. I have been, I don't want to say I'm going to try and use these up, but when I've hit so much pan, I get super motivated. And I love these palettes. I will be so sad when they're gone. That being said, I have so many palettes and I want to get them down. And the only way you do that is by focusing and using up a few. So I have hit pan in several of these colors. I love this one because it's mauves and then really warm browns. I can also do a little bit of a burgundy tone in there. This is just a super wearable palette to me. The Soft Glam is gorgeous. The Sultry is what I have on my eyes today. Again, I've hit serious pan in Twig. I think I'm going to have some pan in some others soon, but some of them aren't as soft like this one today. I have that bloom all over my eye on my crease. I darkened up my outer V a little bit with Twig and mainly with Dystopian. These two are going to last forever. They aren't near as soft as some of the others. And then on my lid, I put the rose quartz. You don't need a lot. It can be quite sparkly. I use quite a loose brush just to dust it on. And it's just a beautiful orange, fun, easy look. I love this one. I love doing an all over my lid with either cinder, teak, or ember. Those are all gorgeous. Now I'm not as much into grays. These are pretty, but I use them maybe once a year, if that. So I don't force myself to use up ones like the black. I probably, you know, I use a little bit of that, but not a lot. So when I use the main bulk of the colors that I like, that's when I'll consider this palette done. These are both just so wearable. I love Anastasia. I don't know why. I think they've discontinued both of these. I think they brought this one, the Sultry, back for a short while. I don't know why they do that. These are amazing palettes. That being said, like I said, I have a lot of other wonderful palettes in my collection. So when I bring these up here with me, I'm super happy using these all weekend long. And then a lot of times when I go back to the valley, I continue using them. We will see if I add these into my makeup use up and what kind of progress I make. The next favorite is a water pitcher. You may have followed that with my toothpaste. I've gone to the Hello Coconut Tea Tree Oil because I don't want any fluoride. There's a lot of other things I don't want like SLS and other things that are in there, but the fluoride is what I'm mainly trying to avoid. We have a reverse osmosis system in the valley. We have filters on our fridge. I decided to get a water pitcher that filters out fluoride and not all of them do. And it came with a water tester. And I thought, well, I can always send it back. I'm curious. I could not believe. I'll put the numbers up here. Whether you have a reverse osmosis or not, I highly recommend testing your water. And most systems don't get rid of fluoride. Fluoride is very controversial, and I've done quite a bit of research, and I don't believe it's good for you. I think it's bad for you, and I believe it's linked to Alzheimer's and many other things. So I am trying to get it out as much as possible from all of these additives that they do us a favor of doing, adding into our food and our water. And this water pitcher filter system is phenomenal. So up here, I got the big one. And surprisingly, these two systems, the one I have in the valley that I'll show you in a minute, and this one up north, don't take up any difference in the fridge. Now you could have it on your counter. I wanted the one up here with the dispenser. Both are super handy and super convenient. You put the water in the top and I use water from our fridge to have it so it's filtering out fewer particulates and that way you don't have to change that filter as often. It was reading zero when I first got it. It still is and they say when it's 0.6 
you should change out the filter. Some of my numbers were 40 without any water system. And they say a 0.6, I was like, yikes, we've been drinking this. So now I make everything that involves water, whether I'm baking bread or making coffee or just having a glass of water, I get everything out of that filtered water pitcher system. I love it. And like I said, because I'm using the water from the fridge or the reverse osmosis system, which has already got a lot of particulates filtered out of there, the filter from these pitchers shouldn't need replacing as often. And I figure it will be between seven and nine dollars a month if I had to replace it when they said. I think it will be even less than that. And for me, that is worth water without plastic in it, without fluoride in it, without all the other things in it. So I'm really pleased with this system. And like I said, it doesn't take up much room in the fridge at all. It looks bigger than it is. The next thing is something that Santa got me for Christmas and I love it. It's a shrink wrap machine. So I buy a lot of our meats on sale or in bulk at Costco. And I also bake a lot. You can shrink wrap out the air from a roast, chickens, pork, whatever you're buying, and it will last, I think it's twice as long in the freezer. I know that roasts and chicken are over a year in the shrink wrap. So that made me happy to be able to have it so it's freezer burn free and will last and be nice, good quality whenever we defrost it. We got a bigger freezer and I have been able to purchase some things. Hopefully we won't be running out with some of the shortages that are going on. I'd be curious as well, do you have any shortages in your area? We are just starting to experience them here in Arizona. So I would be very curious to, for you to let me know what area, you're, you know, what state you're in or country and if you're experiencing any shortages. So I'm going to tell you about a few things that happened in February and basically let's just say I've been appreciating my husband. All of these situations are things that I would not have wanted to have faced without Mark. I wouldn't want to face life without him, but it was super helpful. And luckily I have learned to look for the javelinas. I will insert a picture of one. These are, um, I call them pigs, but they're not pigs. They look like a pig, they don't have good eyesight, and I think they're kind of stupid, but they can be very aggressive, especially when they have babies. I was going out to the jacuzzi and there was probably 10 to a dozen of them with babies. So I called for Mark and he got, we had ourselves a hillbilly night. He got a slingshot and I was handing him these marbles and we were trying to hit them. These things are tough. They are mean. They are thick, leathery skin. Don't worry, we didn't hurt them. We were just trying to make them realize they were not welcome in our yard. But it made for quite an entertaining evening. <laughs> and then we have very, very tall ceilings here and we had a smoke alarm go off in the middle of the night. Why can't they design these things when they're low on battery to go off in the day? This could be like a great patent for somebody to develop. So we had a Chinese water torture treatment that night. You know, every, it didn't seem to have a pattern, but ever, every however many minutes, it could be 20 minutes, it could be an hour, you'd get a beep from that smoke alarm and we'd both wake up and it's, oh. Mark went around and changed all the smoke detector batteries the next day. Oh, replacing smoke alarms are bad, but especially when they're super high up. And then we had a bunch of tall lights go out as well, and he replaced all of those. So it just really makes me grateful to have a man in the house to be able to do all of those things. Some other things I've been appreciating is I work probably 50-60% of the time with Asia, and it was Chinese New Year's. So I told Mark, I'm going to stay up north this week of Chinese New Year's because it should be slow. <laughs> it wasn't slow. It was crazy. But I was grateful to have the week up here. We then had snow. And if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I posted tons on there. 
And then we had several concerts we went to, we went out for dinner with friends, and it was also Mark's birthday. So we had a really full month of a lot of amazing things, and I just feel so blessed. Down in the valley, it's the tropics. Up here, it's warming up, but it's still seasonal, and I just feel like I have the best of both worlds. For television, I know several of you said we should persist with The Sinner. We just couldn't. I did not enjoy it. I didn't like it. I felt like they were milking the same storyline, and it got more and more far-fetched. Life's too short, and I don't enjoy TV a whole lot anyhow, so I don't want a bad show. So we went and finished some that we'd previously been watching. The first one was Afterlife with Ricky Gervais, and we love it. Now, Mark doesn't have an ear for the English accent. I guess with my living over there, I don't have a problem, but we turn on the subtitles for him. <laughs> so um, it looks like it might have finished. I don't know if anyone knows. I looked it up. The way they finished season three, it could be the season ender, which makes me sad. If anybody hasn't watched it, it's a very British, sarcastic, I think it's funny, I love it, um, a man whose wife has died and how he's trying to adjust. And he lives in a very small town and there's a lot of weird quirky stuff in there. But it's just his, he makes the show, definitely, but just about moving on and life and the afterlife of his life after her as well. So I really enjoyed that. And then now we're going back and finishing up the Ozarks. Love that show. It is about a couple who end up in money laundering, drug cartel, they move from Chicago down to the Ozarks, they end up trying to launder money through a casino, they're involved with Mexican cartel, you name it, there is stuff going on in this show. And a lot of it, I think, like with the buying the politicians and everything, I think this might not be too far from the truth, which is very, very scary. But it's really enjoyable, great acting with Jason Bateman, Laura Linney, um, I don't know the kids' names. I want hair like Ruth. I love her hair. It's so curly. But there's just phenomenal acting on that show. So we really do enjoy it. With When we were watching The Sinner, half the time we'd come home from dinner and I'd say, what do you want to do? And Mark would say, let's just do the puzzle or sit in front of the fire or whatever. Now he says, let's watch a show because we're, that tells you the difference of when we enjoy it. So we've been really enjoying that. So I've been little miss domesticated or pioneer woman or whatever you want to call it. With the warmer weather, I can't wait to start my garden. And I'm hoping that by the time this airs, I might have planted some seeds inside and getting them germinating to plant outside in a couple of months. So hopefully I'll have them looking wonderful and show you the little seedlings in March. I did a lot of baking. I did sloppy joes, and I'll link the recipe below. I make up a double batch, and then Mark puts it in these little baggies, just enough for one hamburger bun, and he has that for his lunch, and he loves it. This is a really good recipe. I've adjusted it and tweaked it, so I'll link that below. And then what we call Scott's Chili. My girlfriend's husband's name is Scott, and he is a chili connoisseur. She has many different recipes, and she shared this one with me. And Mark loves it over top hot dogs. Believe it or not, he doesn't eat healthy. <laughs> and so if I want him to eat at home for lunch, which is a little healthier than going out, I make things like chili to put on his hot dog, and that's better than him going out. And I know all the ingredients that go into the chili, even if he's eating a hot dog. So I'll put those recipes below. And then I went through a spell where I thought, I'm going to do sourdough. I don't know if you know, but sourdough is a lot of work. <laughs> um, for the first 7 to 11 days, you have to feed it with flour every day, and it doubles in size, and you either have to discard half of it so that you don't end up with the sourdough monster or you bake with it. Well I was baking like a fiend and I realized why am I doing this? I think sourdough is more work than I want to do especially when my work gets, I get all these 
gust of energy on the weekend and then my work gets crazy during the week and I'm like, what was I thinking? So I baked up the last of sourdough into crackers and then I thought, I'm going to do normal baking, like with yeast and letting it rise and everything. And I found a phenomenal person to follow that you will probably enjoy following. She has a great blog. She has YouTube. She's wonderful. Her name is Recipe Tim Eats, and she has hundreds of thousands of followers. She's in Australia. She's well-traveled, so that says her recipes have a nice flavor of everything. And I did her buns. They were so easy, so amazing, turned out really well. She has a brilliant, just a lot of different brilliant tips, but this one is turn on your dryer for two or three minutes before you need your bread to rise. Stop it, put your bread in the bowl with the wet tea towel over it, shut the dryer, leave it in there for the hour and a half or two hours. It doesn't matter how cold it is outside, what the temperature of your house is, it will double in size and rise like it's supposed to. She has so many great tips like that and these buns were amazing. The only thing that I would change is it makes 12 buns. They're huge. They're as big as your hand. I would probably either have the recipe or make half the size of buns, you know, like the smaller buns so that they're um, either 12 small buns or 24 small buns is what I'm trying to say. And the other recipe that I did with uh, recipe Tim Eats is poached chicken. Now you might go, Elle, why do you want to poach chicken? I love chicken, but I get tired of the same seasonings and I want something handy to snack on. I also want to flavor it differently if I'm adding it to sandwiches or salads or whatever I'm doing. This poached chicken recipe she has turns out perfection and you can leave it. I like things that are fast and easy and foolproof. With my getting distracted with work during the week, it's hard. You turn this on to boiling. When it's boiling, you put the chicken in. When it returns to boiling, you pull it off the stove, off the heat, and you leave it for 10 minutes up to 40 minutes, I think she said. And you go back in there. This chicken is perfectly poached, so moist, so juicy, and I cut it up and then I flavor it afterwards with Montreal chicken or a bit of garlic or chili powder or whatever, depending on what I'm having. I used it in my Caesar salad recipe, which I love. I'll put that below. It's with mayonnaise, so it lasts longer in the fridge than a traditional one. I have a traditional one I make with eggs, but the mayonnaise one makes it last longer. Well, I think I've rambled really long here, so I'm going to stop now. Let me know if you're having shortages below. By the way, another thing I'm appreciating, being Canadian. I am so proud. Oh, super proud of this movement. And if it causes shortages, the government is in control to stop it. That's all I'll say on that topic. But I want to know if you have any shortages in your area. And thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I really appreciate it. Tell me how your February was. I hope you had an amazing month. And I really appreciate you being here. We'll talk to you next time.